Hello and a very warm welcome to Barham Primary and Nursery School. My name is Miss Island, I'm the Assistant Head Teacher and Early Years Leader at school. This is Miss Culkin. Miss Culkin is the Reception Class Lead Teacher and she'll be working alongside Mr Guilfoyle in Reception Class. So today we want to give you an overview of the curriculum that your child will be covering in Reception Class. We want to tell you how we teach in order to cover the Early Years curriculum requirements and to inform you of those need to know matters regarding your child's first few weeks at school. So what is the Early Years Foundation stage? Well, it's the stage of education that runs from birth right through to the end of your child's reception class year. It's based on the recognition that children learn best through play and active learning experiences, and this is what your child will be doing at Barham. There are four important themes that thread and interconnect with one another throughout everything we do in reception class. The first theme is the unique child, where every child is seen as a competent learner from birth who can be resilient, capable, confident and self-assured. And this really is very important to us at Bowerham. We value the uniqueness of every child in our class and we make sure that the uniqueness of that child is tailored throughout everything we do, throughout the curriculum and all the learning experiences that will happen for your child. The second theme is the positive relationships theme. And this is really important. This is a positive relationship. This is a place where your child will make friends, they'll make new friends, and we will also develop relationships with you as parents too. Right from the very, very beginning, it's really important for us to make sure we develop a partnership with you as parents. And that is the real key to ensuring that your child will flourish and achieve to their full potential whilst they're at us, at, with us at Bowerham. Alongside the partnership with you as parents, we are operating a key worker system. Some of you may already be, be familiar with this key worker system if your child already attends um, a nursery or childcare setting. Um, but we have key workers in reception class two, and your child will be allocated a key worker, but we'll talk about that more, more in the slide later on. Um, the enabling environment strand is also very important to us. We really, really value the environment and how that also enables children to extend and, and to support and extend their learning. And with three themes of the unique child, with positive relationships and enabling environments, your child will then be able to learn and develop throughout everything that they do within this fourth theme, the place that they will really love learning. The positive relationship strand, as I've already mentioned, includes the role of the key worker. So your child will be allocated a key worker. That won't be from the very, very beginning. We want your child to come to school first, in that first week in September, and settle in with all of the staff present. We will then allocate you a, a key worker for your child the second week that your child will be in school. So the second week in September, um, they will have their settling in period in that second week. This is, this is the, uh, from the Wednesday, so the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, your child will attend a half day session. And then on the Thursday, so the Thursday the 10th of September, your child will start school for their full day. This is a really exciting time because children get to have a school dinner and that's the most exciting bit. They want to stay for the dinner. So on Thursday the 10th of September, you will have already then found out who your child's key worker will be. So we will let you know, we will give you a leaflet, we'll give you the information that you will need about who your child's key worker will be on the Wednesday the 9th of September before they leave school, before they leave their half day session, so that on the Thursday, your child's key worker will be there to welcome you and welcome your child to school. There's lots and lots of different ways that we want to make sure we work in partnership with you as parents. Um, as I've said earlier, partnership with you is so, so very, very important and it's a vital part of everything that we, we, we do at Bowman. There are lots of different ways that we will get in touch with you through daily informal chats. So at the beginning at the end of the day, there's always that opportunity to maybe talk to your child's key worker. Um, sometimes we recognise that that's not possible, so we do have a key communication diary. This communication diary runs throughout the school, so it starts in reception class and then it will continue. Your child will always receive a communication diary in every year that they're in, in school. Um, this communication diary, if you've got any worries, any questions, or just some comments, just some things that you've been doing at home that you want to maybe write in and let us know about, please write in there and your child's key worker will respond as soon as they can to those comments and questions that you have. Please make sure the communication diary comes to school every day, so that's because that's a two-way communication tool for us. 
The school website, as uh, Mrs Banks, you'll have already um, had a look through um, with Mrs Banks, the school website has a wealth of information on. Uh, please make sure you go on our school website all the time, but at least once a week to check our class pages. The reception class have a class page, um, which is updated on a weekly basis. Every Friday it's updated to let you know what we've been doing in the week and what we will be covering in terms of the interests of the children and the learning and development um, aspects of what we will be doing the week after. And that's really a really nice tool for you to use because they may come home, they're very, very likely to come home, and uh, you'll ask them what they've been doing at school and they're probably going to say nothing mm -hmm. or they've just played, but they're doing so, so much. And so all these different things that we're trying to give you here are tools to enable you to uh, be able to tap into what we actually have been doing and what we're going to be doing the week after so you can talk about that together and prepare them for their learning for the week after at home. So there's a lot of different um, pieces of information on our school website. We also have a school Facebook, YouTube and Twitter page. So keep checking that. There's lots of information that's put on there on a weekly basis. We have a notice board at the gate and in the class windows. So we've put information on there. And um, we also have a term information report that goes out for you as parents so that you can have a look and see whereabouts your child's learning and development is currently and how you can support their learning and development at home with their next steps in their learning. Um, we have Tapestry, our online learning journey, which Ms. Culkin will go and talk about in more detail in a little while, and the Parent App, which is also a vital communication tool for us to use for you as parents that I know Mrs. Banks has already mentioned in her in, has already mentioned. So there are lots and lots of ways that we can get in touch with you and that you can also get in touch with us um, as parents. So please use all these medias if you if you can to get in touch with us. Enabling environments is another strand of the early years curriculum. And as you can see on the photographs, it's not quite the same as coming into the classroom and seeing the classroom, but we hope it can give you a little bit of a flavour here of the sorts of things that we do at school. So we have an indoor environment that changes all the time according to the, according to the children's needs and interests. It's arranged into sections, so there's lots going on. We have sand areas, we have lots of messy play, sand areas, water, creative and workshop areas alongside malleable areas. So you can leave all the messy things to school if you're not really keen on the messy things at home. Um, we have role play areas um, and a home corner. Throughout the year the home corner will stay all the time in reception class. So role play is really is a vital area for developing children's communication and language skills. We have music and singing areas. We have a book corner so children can go and sit and read and share stories and tell stories together, make up their own stories, they're very good at that. Um, and we have also small world instruction areas. So we have a busy and, but very fun environment for the children to be in, indoor, indoors. We also have an outdoor uh, area, which is very exciting, and it's a place that children often want to be. Um, our outdoors is open and it's accessible for children throughout the day. So as soon as the children have welcomed, um, done a welcome and the morning registration, the doors are opened and the children can go outside and do lots of different things on a bigger scale. Um, this is supported by members of the reception class, class team as well. So the reception class team are out there getting involved in the, with the children and making sure they're extending the learning experiences of the children outside. Um, we're out in all the weathers, so please make sure your child comes with the suitable clothing that they need, so the coats, their gloves, hats, scarves, and that can all, always stay in school. So food throughout the winter months, if you want to bring a hat and some gloves and a scarf, and then they can maybe leave that in the tray. That's sometimes something that parents do, um, so that they've always got that there if they need it. But also a pair of Wellingtons. Please make sure, if you can, that you can bring maybe a pair of Wellingtons to school, and these can then maybe stay at school um, on our Willy Rack, and the children then can access them, because it's all about building independence. We, we want the children to be really independent and to be able to go and access all the resources that we have, but also their outdoor clothing as well. So if we, um, if, uh, if, if you know, it's raining, they can go outside, they can get their outdoor suits on, the coats, the wellies, and off they go. Or they can go into the sand um, and get the wellies on and get, get stuck into everything that they want to do. So outdoors, it's a fun place to be. Our curriculum is based upon lots of observations of your child. The staff at the reception class team and the staff observe your child at play and at, their, at learning. 
uh, doing all sorts of different things. And from the observations that we gather, we get together on a daily basis and then we plan learning experiences for the day after and for the week after that. Based upon interests that we see, um, skills that we feel like that we, need, that we maybe need developing for groups of children or for individuals. Um, we, also, um, we also plan our curriculum based around the festivals throughout the year and the seasons of the year, um, alongside all the early years curriculum areas. Which, uh, so it's a busy place, reception class, but it's also a very exciting and a fun place to be. And there are lots going, there are lots of things going on. Uh, Miss Coulter is now going to go into a little bit more detail about the uh, different areas of learning. Okay, so learning development. Um, the early years curriculum, as Miss Ireland has already said, um, is broken up into two areas. We've got our prime areas and specific areas of learning, um, and these are equally important. So the prime areas of learning are those things that are based all around the personal, social, emotion, de emotional development, communication of language, and the physical so these are some really uh, basic areas that we need to really master before the children can then move on and then um, master other skills that we might see later on in school as well. We have lots of things set, set, up, set up in the classroom all of the time um, for the children to develop these skills and we're always using our key work time and group time to develop these skills as well. The specific areas of learning are those that you might identify more with, you might see these kind of, kind of language used throughout school, so you've got your literacy and your maths, as well as understanding the world, expressive art and design, so they're the things that the children will work on in all the different areas, but before they can do that they really need to think about and have mastered those personal and social skills, communication and language and the physical development. We also, alongside this, have our characteristics and effective learning. These areas of learning, these this, this uh, area of learning talks about how our children learn and the different styles they take upon, take on when they learn. Um, these areas are broken down into play and exploring, active learning, and creating and thinking critically. At Barham, we have personalised this and made it a bit more fun for the children. So we've introduced characters that they are already familiar with from um, different TV programmes, from familiar stories really popular characters and we've linked these in with the different skills so the children will be able to say that they are exploring like the Octonauts or they have been thinking of their own ideas like the mouse from Buffalo and they really enjoy using these characters. This is something that we'll go into more detail with you as parents um, during secondary meetings that we'll arrange in September. We'll be able to talk you through these different characters, through the different learning styles and how you might facilitate that at home and how you can then bring that into school as well for the children. Our online learning journey system, Tapestry, is something that we've um, started using a few years ago now and it's a fantastic opportunity for us to show you exactly what the children have been doing but also for you to get engaged, for you to engage as parents and for you to show us what your children enjoy doing at home and also some things you do together as a family. Um, it's something that we update really regularly, we use every day in the classroom and you'll be able to access through an app on your phone or through the website. Um, and it's something that you, we look, like I say, we update really regularly so you can see what your child's been doing. So, like Miss Alan said, when they come out and they say, I've not done anything today, you can look on that and you can say, well, I can see you've been doing this, I know you like playing in this area, and you can use that to prompt and model those conversation skills. Um, you will be uh, sent an email with an activation link um, over the next week or so so that you can start using Tapestry now, which will be really good and really exciting for you to do. It's really important that you activate that link as soon as you can because it does expire, okay? So as soon as you get that email, activate that link and make sure you get logged on. Start playing around with the app, and as soon as you start putting pictures and things on there, we will start replying and commenting. It'd be really nice for us before your child starts in September for us to be able to picture the different things they like to do, get a feel for their interests, then we can start adapting our environment to, towards that and make sure when they come in, there are some familiar things there that we know they like to do. Special memories. It's really obviously um, using our tapestry account, we, sorry, your tapestry accounts, we build up a picture of everything your child likes to do um, within the day at school, but they also will still do paintings and they'll have lots of pieces of work, some of which will come out home throughout the year, but we also like to collate those um, and create a special learning journey for you to take over at the end of the year. 
that could go out alongside your tapestry and learn your journey. So we will present your child with this in a special folder at the end of the year when they have their reception graduation. It's a really lovely event where we invite all our families in together. Each child is presented with their learning journey for the year and it's a really lovely and special time for them. Buddies. We have a buddy system in school um, that the children absolutely love. We buddy our children up with year five pupils um, and they visit each week, so they have a visit at least once every other week with this child, so they do things like they might do some drawing, they might play outside, they might look at some puzzles um, and have some different activities and they share their lunch with them as well, which is really lovely. It's, it's something they've introduced in the last couple of years, which is lovely. Um, you will receive a letter from your Year 5 buddy um, in September and you'll get the opportunity your child will get to meet them. The reason we use Year 5 children, we buddy up Year 5 and Reception children, so that when Reception children come over from Reception into Year 1, they still have that familiar child who then goes into Year 6 around school and they can still have that buddy system in place for their Year 1 year as well. And it works really well. So, our routines, a typical morning Reception class. Um, we open our school gates at 8.40 um, and the children can come into class from that time. So we don't actually focus to the children until 9 o'clock, so in the morning we have a morning activity for the children to complete, which means the children can come in calmly, they can settle, um, and it's not a big rush or a big cluster of children coming all in at once, which is lovely. Um, we have our whole group welcome time where the children say good morning, we order our lunches, and get settled for the day before we take on our phonics fun time. Um, the children after phonics then have time to access all of the different areas that we've been talking about. So all of the indoor and outdoor areas, they can access through their own choice, if they choose where they want to go, um, and then they just might work in small groups throughout the morning to complete an activity that needs to be completed. Um, snack is open throughout the morning. I know some people will say, you won't get my child away from that snack. We provide a healthy snack, um, and the children can access that throughout the morning up until 11 o'clock. Um, and we do, we do monitor that and make sure that we are using a sensible or having a sensible amount of snack um, and that's something that the children really enjoy doing and it builds up that independence. We start tidy up time about quarter past eleven before going into a second phonics time which focuses on um, phonics writing and we focus on that fine motor control things like that which is brilliant and then we have our singing and rhyme time before lunch at quarter to twelve. After lunch, we we gather together as a whole class again to register um, and say our good afternoon welcome, and then we go off into our magical maths group, which is a, a maths activity that we carry out every day, a, a maths time where the children can have fun with number and shape and play around with these different concepts. Just a short time before we introduce the afternoon activity, and children again can go off and play in the and, and get busy in the environment choosing where they want to get busy, thinking about the different interests they have and developing those skills. Um, again, indoor and outdoors open all afternoon before we tidy up. At the end of the day, we have our key worker group time uh, where we gather together in our key worker groups um, and talk about different things, different interests, maybe what we've done over the weekend, or that's a time where we often develop our personal social skills and talk about different things that might um, occur there. And then, quarter past three is home time, when we hand the children back over to you. Uh, some other, a few other things that you might want to know, um, clothing. Our children lose clothes <laughs> like nobody's business. It's really important that we label all of our clothes, even the things you don't think they're going to lose, like the t-shirts. Get it, label it just in case, and make sure um, everything's labelled so that we can return anything that's been misplaced to its rightful owner. Make sure we label jumpers, t-shirts, trousers, also shoes. We take, we take their shoes off to put the wellies on and shoes are so similar. We often have lots of the same neck shoes or lots of the same Clark shoes and they forgot where they've put them. They look really similar so they put them on their feet and they're not quite right, we don't know why. Mm -hmm. So please, please, please label your clothes. It's really helpful. Music can return anything to you that's misplaced um, and, and you're able to get clean all your stuff back. We have um, our PE day is a Monday. On our PE day, the children can come into school in their PE kit, which you will have already seen in the video that Mrs. Banks has posted. They'll have their coloured t-shirts um, and the appropriate bottoms for PE and trainers. 
um, which is fantastic. They love coming to school in the PE kit and it means that they're ready for any active learning that day. Um, on a Friday, we also have a special day which is Dress Down Friday. Everyone loves Dress Down Friday. We as staff love Dress Down Friday. Um, which means the children can come into school, they need to wear their, their uniform for the top parts, so they wear their school sweat, uh, sweatshirt and polo shirt, um, but dress down from the bottom. So they might be able to they might wear jeans or jogging bottoms, trainers, whatever they want to wear, sticking skirts, things like that. It's up to them what they want to wear, and we as staff do that as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so the final thing is that you'll be receiving a letter to let you know all the different things that are going on, all the different dates and things like that, and with any more information that you might need. Finally, we appreciate our and we love all of our children. We appreciate, appreciate that every child is different, they look different, they behave differently, they like different things, and they develop, develop at different times and rates. They learn at different times and in different ways. But we value all of your children and we thank you so much for sending them to us and we love, we will love and cherish each and every one of them. Okay, so that's our presentation. If you have any more questions, anything we've not answered, no matter how small or how big a question, please get in touch with us. You can use um, the school office is open. Our uh, email address is on the website and you can contact us through those. Um, get in touch and we'll answer anything we can and help you out with anything. Thank you very much for watching. I can't wait to meet you in September.